Brethren, we welcome those also joining us by live stream this morning. I offer to you some introductory thoughts on the nature of participation in the body of Christ. Now, participation, the word denotes personal involvement and invested activity. It is an exchange and partnership which occurs, that occurs through our participation. In relationships, we see this, in actions, in teachings, and motives. It is an act of sharing, partaking, and it involves reliance and also the act of giving. Now, in considering the nature of participation in the body of Christ, it must be accepted that first and foremost, our participation is with Christ himself. As Hebrews 3.14 says, for we are partakers of Christ. Jesus spoke of this intimate union when he said, he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. Amen. Speaking of this participation with Christ. In fact, for us to be partakers of Christ, he had to first participate in our createdness by taking part of flesh and blood. That through death he might destroy him who has the power of death, that is the devil. And it is now that by partaking of his body and blood, which was broken and poured out for our redemption, that we are made partakers of the divine nature and escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. We take part in Christ. We are then made one with Christ and one with the Father. We are born of his spirit and the evidence of it is in our worship of him and in doing that which is after the spirit. So we look at love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. These are fruit of participation with God and our fellowship with Christ. And the Father is glorified when we bear much fruit. It is in much fruit that he is glorified. And in this we are partakers of Christ, and God himself partakes of the fruit of his nature born in us. So you see that you have the union of the Godhead. The Father has given all things to Christ. Christ ministers through his spirit. And then we are joined into the fellowship of the Godhead in participation with him. So first and foremost, we are partakers of Christ himself. And that has to be established before we can speak of any further participation in the body of Christ in any other way. So secondarily, though, we are jointly sharing in this fellowship yes. in the nature of Christ, right? And upon partaking of Christ, we also become partakers together with one another yes. in this fellowship with the Godhead. Mm -hmm. We are united in a co-participation and a unique line of communication is opened up between us because we are joined to the head who is Christ. So we see that believers are brought into an intimate union with Christ and with all who are joined to him because he is not disjointed. He is not disjointed. You look at the Godhead, they are not in any variance with one another. So as we are ushered into that participation, it is to be a reflection and be cohesive with that fellowship that is already in existence long before we ever were. So the head creates an entire household whereby we, are, we obtain holy companionship and we mature together in the likeness of our Lord. And we together are in the process of growing and fruit bearing united and being formed into the image of Christ, not only individually, but together. Amen. That when people see the church, they see a more full image of Christ himself. 
Together we are instruments of his power, having himself distributed in measure among us. And so each one receives grace directly from Christ and then from those joined to him. This is why Jesus prayed that we would be one even as he and the Father are one. He has designed a sacred circuit of fellowship, you might say, through which his power and mercy is received and given to the degree and depth to which we are participants of Christ himself we also will be joined to one another. Yeah. I've called that like a circuit. Yeah. Sin breaks that. Yeah. Sin breaks the fellowship and connectedness. It damages that sacred circuit of oneness. So what are some practical implications of our participation in the body of Christ? And this is how I would exhort you. This is a day by day, moment by moment exchange between us and the Son. To the extent that I am actively participating in crucifying my flesh, in walking in the Spirit, and seeking His will, Mm -hmm. and to that extent alone will I be able to minister to the other members of the body. This means all selfish ambition must be forfeited. And I must discipline myself to look for and hear and heed the voice of Christ. So that which I participate in forms me and impacts my level and the quality of my participation when I am with the other brethren. Not only does this influence me when I am about my daily activity, but I must soberly consider and apply this to how I participate when I am together with all of you. So participation, let's again be reminded of the word. It it involves personal involvement and an active investment. How do we participate then together? We do this by listening, by responding in word and deed, yes, by learning, by edifying. And that is the sole purpose for which God ordained his body to meet together is for edification. There's not any other reason, really. Anything else comes out of that. Edification is the son's purpose for our gatherings. Remember that participation is an invested activity when we come here together. So let me admonish us in this way. To the extent to each one of us is actively invested for edification and inwardly participating with the Son of God, to that level, one is at liberty to outwardly participate. Our gifts will direct how each member does this, but our level of understanding and participation between us and the Son is to govern govern our activity among the brethren. Now you'll see where any where any carnal influence, where anything that is not edifying has entered into an assembly, it is because this has not been kept. Uh Just as our fellowship with the Godhead and our fellowship with believers is not fragmented, neither is our assembly to be in this way. For we desire to offer a word, right? Uh Well, if we desire to offer a word, then we must strive to be attentive to the words others are bringing. If we seek to lead, then we must be willing to submit to those who have charge over our souls. If we desire to help, we are also to value the help of others God calls to do the same. This is how the sacred circuit of participation moves God's power to us and through us. So when you are given understanding of any sort, pray and discern how and when to effectively minister yes. this to the body in deed and word. And I say that because sometimes you may perceive something uh-huh. that the body needs, but you're not quite sure when and where yes. to address that. Uh-huh. That is a matter of prayer. Yes. It is a matter to diligently seek, yes. for it is a stewardship, and God will uh-huh. show you how to use that. Amen. When a brother or a sister asks a question, Seeking understanding. We are to respond to that brother or sister in patience and in love. Seeking not only to expose erroneous thinking, but to build up that one's faith. That's right. 
they do not become an enemy for lack of understanding. And we want to build one another up. When you feel a need for understanding, which if any of us are honest, there are things which we hear in the assembly and read in the word where we know our understanding is deficient. We want to gain understanding. If you seek understanding, first of all, that desire is from the Lord. So do pray for it and pray for your brethren on the same matter, that together we may have understanding. So that if there is a brother or sister who has greater understanding, they will have opportunity to expound upon that. And may it not be found in us that we are more eager to speak than to listen. This is something that's been impressed upon me very much of late. So I admonish, and particularly I would like to admonish the children in this area. That is to seek first to be an attentive listener. Amen. Take notes, yeah. but also take notes on those things which you want to understand better. Yeah. Uh -huh. When you hear something you do not comprehend, mm -hmm. take a note on that, all right? Mm -hmm. Speak to your parents, yeah. speak to those adults that are in your life that you can approach. You have many of them here. Yes. And, and also go to those in the assembly. This doesn't just pertain to children. We can all be sharpened in this way. Amen. By doing this, you are participating in every respect, mm -hmm. continually, even when you're not speaking. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. See, there must be activity before you speak. Mm -hmm. yeah. There must be participation before we act. Because that's where we find discernment as to what to say and what to do. There's not a spiritual gift, I don't think, for interjection. Where you're just not connected to what's going on and what's being said. But you have a good thought, so you just throw it out there. The Lord has joined you in continuity with himself. He has joined the brethren to be in fellowship together. And when we are in assembly together... That is to reflect the nature of this fellowship. Yeah. How will you know if correction is needed if we are not engaged in listening? That's right. How will you know the right and effectual word to speak mm -hmm. if we are not engaged not only in listening but observing? Mm -hmm. Look about us. Be attentive to our brethren. Be attentive to the spirit, yeah. the personality of our gatherings. Yeah. How yeah. much is it like Christ? How much do we need to grow? Yeah in the likeness of Christ. If we are looking for those things, God will equip us to participate in our words and in our deeds. And you see how that is effectual for edification. He will give us what is needed and we will be able to speak that which is needed. And that is a validation of discernment. Amen. And we know brethren who have this gifting they can look and feel and sense and discern what needs to be spoken here and now to this particular gathering of believers. That is, that's how we're to think. Because there's no truth that God has given that is not relevant to us here and now. But you understand that sometimes in the way that you give that, it can be a sharper sword, you might say. right? You can have more keen understanding and effectually effectually impart the word of God. So in these things, let us be participants in the body of Christ, with he himself, with the members of the body. And remember, this is like a circuit of power coming from God the Father. He has given all things into the hands of his Son, and the Son has given us his Spirit by which we are to move and act and be formed and the spirit here he is uniquely here among us as we meet together yes. he is always with us yes. but remember where jesus said where two or more are gathered yes. in my name there i am in the midst what is he saying he has a special blessing mm -hmm. for us when we gather together yes. see the spirit of god in you testifies and the spirit of god in me testifies all the same spirit and when we come together, these gifts that he's given us are like multiplied to each one of us as we walk in the spirit and discern how to give and take. Yeah. 
So let us think first and foremost of being accountable to our Lord Jesus, who has entrusted us with many good things, and that in joy we are able to fellowship with him and gain a clear and, and proper perspective of one another and how to respond, how to act, and when to speak a word. And I'm praying he will give that to us and continue to give that to us. Amen. So let me open us up in prayer. Dear Lord, I do ask that you would create in us a willing heart continually, more and more, to increase within us this desire to see what you see and to do what you do and to be your instruments, to be your vessels of blessing, particularly to the household of faith. So that as we meet even here today, increase our awareness and help us all to grow in these gifts that you have given to us. And that we would love the image of Christ that we see in one another and seek to strengthen and build up your body. We pray that this would happen this morning and in even greater measure than it has in times past. We bless you, Lord, in the name of Christ. Amen.